Hi, I'm Peyton, the primary FTC product developer here at Animark. Today, we're going to talk about the Robits Core Kit. So this is the Robits Core Kit. So the box itself is fairly substantial. And what that means is there's a lot of great goodies inside. We also opted to make sure we chose a box that's going to last. So in this particular case, there's an easy open flap in the front. One of the things we wanted to make sure when teams got their core kit is they had a good box to be able to store their components in and be able to take to competitions with them if they needed to. So now we're going to talk about some of the different categories of parts that come in a Robits core kit. Let's talk about our gears. So this is the gears that come in a Robits core kit. And we have sizes that start at 30 and go up to 60. On each of our gears, there's an alignment notch, allowing you to put multiple gears on the same shaft and have all of the teeth line up. You'll also notice it has a hole pattern. This hole pattern is on all of our gears and allows you to bolt directly to a Robitz tube. On our gears, every gear has a tooth count printed into the webbing. So you can just look at it and know exactly what tooth count it is. So when we chose these size gears, we wanted to make sure we had gears that were easily able to install together. In this particular case, our normal counts of teeth to make two gears mesh are 60, 80, and 100. By having gears that increment in 10 teeth, it allows teams to easily add two sets of gear teeth together to determine if it's the correct gear set for a spacing. So one thing to note about these particular gears is they're a half inch wide and they're fiber infused nylon. This makes them incredibly tough and great for all applications. So the next thing we're going to talk about is our three inch Omni wheel. So they're going to come like this, but they easily assemble to this. And so these are an all metal construction, make them incredibly durable and expandable. In Later down the road, if you want an even smoother ride, you can actually put two Omni wheels together to make what we call a dually. Our primary drive wheel in our Robits kit is our three inch gray stealth wheel. This is a great wheel for teams because the durometer is firm enough to be able to provide traction, yet still last a very long time. So the other thing we want to talk about are green compliant wheels. So these are the same green compliant wheels that teams know and love for their squish factor. New this year are our 14 tooth five millimeter HTD pulleys. They have an alignment notch on either side, allowing you to put them on a shaft and have all of your belts lined up. Once again, we've made sure to put the tooth count on the pulley to make it easier for teams to identify what the pulley is. So these are what we're calling bushing carriers. And so what these are are gussets that have an integrated bushing in the end and are made out of acetal, which is great for things that are running on them. For example, while we use a 3 8 hex shaft, it's designed to fit inside of a motion component and spin. And because these are round, you don't have to align the hexes to get something to be inserted inside the other. The two types we have here right now are our side bushing carrier and our end bushing carrier. Similarly to our bushing carriers, we're having what we call shaft carriers. So these have a hex profile on them, allowing you to use them similarly to a hub. This is what we're calling a double end shaft carrier which is great for use with our half by half tube on the ends of it. And this is what we're calling a side shaft carrier, which is great for rotating things such as like a linkage. The next thing we'll talk about are our hex shafts. All of our robot shafts are 3 8 hex, steel, and both ends are tapped for a 1032 screw. What this allows you to do is retain components on the shaft using a washer and a small 10 screw. One of the things we wanted to make sure with robots is that things are easy to use. For our bushings, they're made out of the same acetal material as before, but because they've got a round profile on the inside, it allows you to insert the shaft in any which way, making it super simple to use. In Robits, we want to make things as simple as possible, so we have some pre-selected belt lengths that work with our pulleys. We decided on belts over something like chain because it doesn't require you to use any fancy tools to put them together, and they are very clean and efficient. The gear motor ratios we've selected for our Robits kit are 3.7, our 19.2, and our 51 to 1 gear motors. We think this provides an adequate spread of speeds, giving you two that are probably great for your drivetrain, one for a very heavy lifting task, and one potentially for something more light duty like an intake. New this year are Animark programmable servos. The two that'll come in your kit are our high torque versions. These servos come with a built-in mounting plate, making them excellent to mount directly to a robot's tube. Additionally, they have a hex output, making them very easy to attach an output to. Here are the adapters we've selected for our Robits core kit. Because Robits is based around 3 8 hex, we have created some adapters to convert some of our existing components into Robits. These components are what we're calling our plates. 
Plates in our Robits kit come in our 2x4, 4x4, and 4x8 variety. We wanted to make sure our Robits components were easily identifiable. So for example, on our 2x4 bracket, that refers to the number of holes in one direction by the number of holes in a second direction. Plates are great for attaching components together, as well as having large mountable surfaces for other things to attach to. Next, we'll talk about our corners. So this is a 3x3 corner, and this is a 5x5 corner. Corners are really great for attaching things at a right angle. Additionally, on the inside face, the hole pattern allows you to mount these at a 45 degree angle from other structure, making them excellent uses for such things as like a funnel. Here we're going to talk about our 2x3L. Ls are really great for attaching two components where one is perpendicular to the other component. So here we have our beam components. First we'll start with our slotted beam, then we have our 1x4 beam, our 1x8 beam, our 1x12 beam, and finally our 1x16 beam. Beams are really great because they're super lightweight and are great for making things such as linkages where you want to adjust things one hole at a time. Our beams are in increments of two inches, which are four holes on our grid. Occasionally, when you're mounting components either at an angle or on some structures, you may find that component might go off grid. What a slot allows you to do is mount the component to the nearest available hole in a structure. One of the more unique gussets we have in our robots kit are our U gussets. So this is a three by three U gusset. U gussets are really unique because oftentimes if you're mounting two pieces of half inch tube together, you'll find that the component rotates. What a U gusset does is it allows you to bolt that to your structure and keep the other tube from rotating. In our Robits core kit, we selected the 45 degree gusset and the 135 degree gusset. We believe in conjunction, this allows you to mount your components in complementary angles to each other. Here we have our motor mounts. So this is our side motor mount, which allows you to mount a Neverest motor to the side of a piece of half by half. You'll notice there are eight holes where there are only four mounting holes on a Neverest. This was done so you can clock your motor at any angle in a 45 degree increment. Here we have our 80 to 100 tooth motor mount. What this does is it allows you to select between either an 80 tooth spacing or a 100 tooth spacing. When using your motor, if you're using the 80 tooth spacing, you'll use the lower three holes. And if you're using a 100 tooth spacing, you'll slide the motor up and use the upper three holes. At the core of Robits is our tubes. So this particular tube is our one by one by 15 and a half inch long tube. Along the top side of our tube is a series of number 10 holes on a half by half grid. This allows you to easily mount gussets and components to the top of a tube. Additionally, on the side of a tube, we have a series of half inch spaced holes for a number 10. And then in between each of those is a larger hole designed specifically to fit a bushing. Tubes are really great for mechanisms because they allow you to transfer motion along the length of the component. And these are awesome for things such as drivetrains, arms, or even upper structure. Here we have our half by half tubes, which come in the sizes of two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and 16 inch lengths. Tubes have the standard half by half number 10 hole profile along the entire length of the tube on all four sides. So here we have our standoffs. So our standoffs are similar to our shafts. They're three eighths, but instead of being hex, they're round and both sides are tapped for a number 10. So similarly, you can use a screw and a washer to retain components on a standoff or standoffs are really great for holding structure together. Our standoffs will be coming in one inch, two inch and four inch varieties. In our robots kit, we have two different size servo wires. The first one is two feet, and the second one is three feet. We believe this is a great variety for teams to place their electronics really anywhere on their robot and still be able to connect everything. So these are standard black rubber band that are great for things such as adding grip to a component, or even making something as rudimentary as a strap for let's say a battery or a phone. Rubber bands are great because they can provide an elastic force, such as as a counterbalance for an arm, or even for launching. I made sure to aim over the over your head. It's fine. In every robots kit, teams will get a set of cable ties, which are great for helping with wire management as well as holding components together really in a pinch. We understand teams have some pretty creative uses for our components, so we wanted to include a large spool of string so that teams can be even more creative on how they attach and maneuver mechanisms. Because we expect teams to use the threaded portions on the ends of their shafts, 
we've selected two different types of spacers that'll fit over the end of a hex shaft so that they can properly space out all of the components on the shaft. Here at Animark, we understand teams will need to be able to mount things to their robot. Things such as team number, alliance marker, or even just general branding. So we've provided some pieces of perforated polycarbonate with the robot's hole pattern on them, making them very easy to mount to your structure and additionally put things such as logos and other branding. At the bottom of your robot's kit, you'll find a hardware organizer. Inside your hardware organizer, you'll find your fasteners and your screw spacers. Additionally, we've included a ruler to help teams identify the length of their screw as well as the length of their spacer. Here's the tools that come in a robot's kit. We have our two and a half millimeter hex key and our two and a half millimeter hex driver. Both of these are great for the motor mounting screws. Next, we have our 330 seconds hex driver, which is great for all of our hex adapters. Finally, we have our 530 seconds hex driver, which is great for all of our number 10 fasteners. Lastly, we have our 3 8 hex wrench, which is gonna be great for all of your number 10 nuts. So this is everything that comes in your Robits Core Kit. We're so excited to see what you guys can come up with.